Good afternoon, Dave. Hey, good it's, to be here. It is Tuesday. I know. November. 20th. Happy Thanksgiving. Belated. <laughs> Belated. Yeah, same to you. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope everyone at home had a wonderful weekend. If you are watching now or watching uh, later on, um, welcome to the show. And we're here on an earlier day of Tuesday. Very excited today uh, as we count down to the end of the year where we try and hit the 100th episode. Uh, we have reached uh, 98 today. I so know. very excited. That means there's two left, Dave. Two more to go. <laughs> we should tell everybody the last two. So yeah, I think we're going we're gonna to make it. I think we're so what is, what is number 99 then, Jamie? All right, number 99, drum roll, please, is on December 11th. And it is the third year in succession that we will be hosting the Steve Martin Banjo Prize. Um, the winners I will not reveal. But we will reveal them on December 11th at the show. So please stop in for that one. And then the following week, uh, December 19th, will be episode 100. And we thought, who better than to join us than uh, our good friend, Mr. Jens Kruger, for the, for the last 100th show of the year. So those are the last two coming up. Uh, but for right now, let's focus on number 98. Uh, I think it's time to, to talk about and bring in our guest today. Um, she hails from Virginia. She's a multi-instrumentalist and film composer and best known on social media as Guitar Yaz, uh, where her many, many followers are regularly treated to beautiful and joyful renditions in her own unique style, oftentimes on her good time Americana banjo. She is a guitarist uh, at heart, uh, but recently hit up the banjo and is, is uh, really having a lot of fun with it. Uh, she's received critical acclaim from numerous major publications, including the New York Times, Pitchfork, Rolling Stone, and in 2023 was listed as one of the 25 new and rising artists shaping the future of music by Pitchfork magazine. Uh, she is always smiling, which is one of our favorite things about her, and she is uh, one of the latest members to join our ever-growing uh, artist family roster. And without further ado, please welcome Ms. Yasmin Williams. I think she's there. Hello. Hey, hey y'all. I got you. Thank you for me. <laughs> how you doing? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm very well. Very well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for doing this today. This is great. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, that's going to be good. It's going to be good. How? Uh, so you're in Virginia right now. How is everything in I'm, Virginia? I'm at home. Finally, I was on tour for a couple weeks with uh, Valerie June, Rachel Davis, and Tao, and mm -hmm. it was awesome. But I'm happy to be home. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna get rest, into that you know? in, in a little bit because yeah. it sounds sounds really cool. Um, it was uh, very cool. You. Yeah, so welcome home. Thank uh, you. Do you want to kick us off with a little tune? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's jump in. I think I'll play Wait. some Lazy John and Blackberry Blossom. I like awesome. this. Thank you. 
Yeah. Very good. Very nice. So you play you play a lot of instruments. Would you say the acoustic guitar is your primary, probably? For sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's one of it's basically the instrument I've been playing the longest, um, and it's just the one I'm most comfortable on. Uh, and yeah, that's what I'm kind of I guess known for. Um, <laughs> but I do play a lot of other instruments. Like I love to play banjo, of course. Um, I got into Cora a couple of years ago. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm in my music room right now, just surrounded by just various, just random things <laughs> that I like to play. <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, and you have like, uh, an interesting beginning on, on the guitar. You, you started on, as far as I know, you started on, you know, by playing guitar hero and, and beating the game essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So it was guitar hero two, which is important because <laughs> if it was any of the other ones, I would not be here. It's um, way hot. <laughs> Guitar Hero Two is way hotter than Guitar Hero One. I know, but it's not as hard as Guitar Hero Three, the last one, like through the fire and flames. I wouldn't be here if I had to sure. beat that, but it worked out, and <laughs> I beat all the songs. And um, yeah, my my parents bought me uh, my first electric guitar after that because I was like, I was just obsessed with the idea of getting a guitar for some reason because I loved the game so much, and I really hadn't thought about playing guitar before getting the game but um it was i was obsessed so they got me one and yeah that was like 15 and a half ish years ago so yeah and how'd wow. you make because you were originally kind of more focused on electric guitar right and then you made a transition yeah. to acoustic yeah so i was playing like a bunch of um my favorite things to play at the time were nirvana because it was simple um I was I was like twelve years old when this was happening. So Nirvana was great. I tried to play a lot of Hendrix at the time. That wasn't simple, so that wasn't as great. Um, but just things like that, you know. I was getting into a lot of kind of hard rock and stuff like that, because it was all very new to me. And my the game kind of informed my musical taste at that point too, which is bizarre to think about now. But that is that was the case. But I made the transition to acoustic guitar because I was trying to play the electric guitar kind of like lap style, like in my lap, kind of like this. Um, and I found out that it was just a lot easier on acoustic guitar. And also I got into alternate tunings and I got into finger picking too, which I just, yeah, electric guitar became like very boring and I wanted to make the switch to acoustic. That's very cool. I, I gotta ask, what was, what was the song you found the hardest on Guitar Hero 2? Because I played that game for hours and hours and hours. Seriously? Didn't quite have the trajectory that you did following playing that game for hours and hours and hours. But here we are. I, <laughs> the most difficult song for me was probably a song called Thunder Horse. Uh -huh. I think it was one you had to unlock. Like it was, it was a yeah. bonus one maybe, but it's by, it's a song by Death Clock, the like fake metal band. They have like a show on, anyway. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, a song yeah. called Thunder Horse and it was just <laughs> stupid fast. It was silly. <laughs> But so I, is there something about the, the sound of acoustic guitar that you just kind of gelled with yeah. or the feel of it or, or where did it go from there? Because we're, we're going to yeah. do this journey from there to where you are now, obviously. With the band, sure. But. Well, so I think when I started playing electric guitar, I was just still kind of in my angsty teenage-ness. <laughs> and that is kind of the vibe that I wanted to give off. But um, after about two, two and a half-ish years of just playing electric um because funnily enough, when I was like 12, 13, 14 years old, I didn't really think acoustic guitar was all that great um, because I just thought it was kind of a singer-songwriter tool. I'd really only heard people play about like, four chords with it while like strumming and singing, and I thought it was lame, essentially. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then I like heard uh, a couple of really cool fingerstyle players, Khaki King being one of them, yeah. who uh, just kind of showed the guitar, the acoustic guitar in a different light. And yeah. Once I got one, I realized, like, wow, you can do alternate tunings. You can finger pick, which is, I really love using fingers over a plectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and just, it kind of, just, there's so many different kind of timbres and tones you can get out of the acoustic guitar that you, I couldn't at the time get out of an electric guitar. And it just, my interest just kind of went towards yeah. acoustic, just uh, purely for, honestly, just because of the different sounds you can get out of it and percussive things you can do. and you can mount other instruments onto it and you can do different. It's cool. I just thought it was really interesting. 
Well, around that time, you were probably like when you looked at acoustic guitar, there wasn't a lot mainstream going on that was particularly exciting that, that yeah. would have caught your interest anyway. You know, so I get this. You, you probably had the, the Jack Johnsons of the world doing what they do, mm -hmm. which is yeah, it's exactly. middle, of, middle of the road stuff. And then you kind of stumble on a khaki king or like exactly. a Michael Hedges or someone like that. And exactly. Go, wow. Yeah. Okay. It definitely broadened my horizons um, to what guitar could do in general. And just honestly, it, acoustic guitar lended itself really well to experimentation, which was kind of my like main priority with playing guitar in general. What mm -hmm. sounds can I get out of it? What can, I do, what can I do with it? And eventually it became like, what songs can I write with it? Because I was very just, my main interest was just composing, writing my own tunes. Mm -hmm. And acoustic guitar allowed me to do that much easier because I didn't want to start a band. Really, my friends didn't want to start a band. I didn't want to start a band. Hmm. I mean, I didn't like people that much at the time, and I just didn't have time for it. Was this like still in the, the teen angst thing? Like this was the like... teen angst. <laughs> like it just... was just silly. I just didn't have time for it. I was like, I we all did just... it. We didn't we? Of I'm just course. brooding in my room and just I want to play acoustic guitar and write moody songs and just kind of become the best guitar player ever. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's, uh, I think it's, it's what it's all about. Did, how long did you play uh, just just straight guitar before you started venturing into like just not just banjo, but like just other instruments? Generally yeah. speaking, I like wanted to put your hands on anything with strings. Like, how did probably. That hmm. So I was probably playing guitar for about two and a half-ish years before I started kind of using different techniques on guitar, like acoustic guitar, mm. like lap tapping and using different instruments like hammers and other things. And then probably four or five-ish years before I got into like other string instruments, like I played sitar for a little bit, I played um, mm -hmm. uh, other things. And then once I got my hands on a Cora, like I don't remember, what was this, 2019-ish? Maybe mm -hmm. is that's kind of opened the floodgates for getting all of these other instruments. And now you just, yeah, sure, I'll take it. <laughs> I just got it to my collection. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And I just, well, I I'd always loved core music since yeah. um, like sixteen, seventeen years old. Um, yeah. So I've always I've wanted one for a long time, and once I finally got the chance to buy one, I bought it. But um, yeah. I, I've i always kind of been interested in learning different instruments. Um, clarinet is technically my first instrument. I played clarinet for about 15 years. Wow, that's quite interesting. Yeah. yeah that's a whole different game. I played saxophone for a long time. Nice. Yeah, oh, I never cool. knew that. Well, I like to share and keep some things secret from you, David, so that I've got like little gems to drop mid-show. Like right there. Yeah. yeah Were I, you I in played. band? No, band in England was nothing. It was we did, we oh. didn't have band like America has band, and so um, at least not for me anyway. So it was very much a I would break it out and just show my relatives what I could do in a solo format, and uh, just I just couldn't. <laughs> I would always try and fake like practice. And my teacher would always know when I haven't actually practiced, and I just memorize it by ear. And then, you know, I was just like, nah, strings are for me. Win would win is not. But um, yeah. It's a tough one. It's a tough life, really. I gave it up uh, to focus primarily on guitar in college. And uh, I don't know. The classical music world is very different from yeah. the world I'm in right now. It's I, I, did, I made the right decision, I think. <laughs> yeah. Are you happy with it? Of course, yeah. Well, then absolutely. that's the only thing that matters. Yeah. 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 It's interesting how you felt, how you've, uh, you know, leaned into creating your own music and your own style on while playing guitar versus because it's so there's so many people that have you know done finger style in the very traditional you know route and uh mm -hmm. you really have your own thing going what made what do you think made you want to go that that route versus versus kind of just a real kind of standard um route and also what kept you from ever did you have you ever wanted to felt you needed to sing because you're generally a solo instrumentalist and that you needed to like add this other element. Yeah. Well, I think just not really liking a lot of other, I don't know. I kind of would seek out sometimes guitar music, solo guitar music. Um, and I just didn't really like it. 
Um, it just wasn't doing a whole lot for me, so I just figured, well, I can just write my own songs. And plus, I just it's just what it's something I enjoy to do. I really love to experiment with guitar specifically because it's just it's just really fun, and it's honestly the reason I play uh, guitar primarily, um, other than just loving the way it sounds. But I feel like for me back then, as a 12, 13, 14, 15 year old, it was really just all about experimentation for sure. And it early on, I definitely realized that guitar in general, especially acoustic guitar, kind of is the way that I can express myself the best, whether it's just um, working through any sort of emotional things that I'm going through at any point in time, or uh, trying to communicate something with someone else. Um, I tend to just kind of do it through song and I uh, yeah I've just kind of always been that way since I started playing guitar so that's probably why I wasn't really too concerned with sounding like other people because that's that was never really the goal um, even though I started playing through video game <laughs> which makes you sound like other people <laughs> um, once I got my hands on an actual instrument I was like you know what I could it's just it's more fun to just try to figure out what I sound like and kind mm -hmm. of ignore everything else um, so that's why I kind of play in interesting ways, I guess, or in, I don't know. Interesting might not be the right word. It's just, just different. Um, as far as singing, um, I don't really think that was ever a conscious decision to not sing. It was more of just a, I'm focused on guitar right now, and guitar is very difficult. It's a very difficult instrument to quote unquote master, and there's so much I can do with this. Why add something else? Like, my goal for a long time has been to just kind of make the guitar kind of sing for me versus using mm -hmm. my own voice. But nowadays I've been singing more. Um, so we'll see We'll see if I incorporate more into my own performances because on the tour with Valerie and Rachel and Tao, I was singing a lot. <laughs> so they kind of pushed me into it. But, um, yeah, I, don't, I never really felt pressured to... Uh, write my own songs or something with lyrics because one it's it's difficult to do that it's not something that mm -hmm. comes naturally to me and two it's just the guitar is such a lyrical instrument i don't really feel compelled but that that might be changing i don't know and you a lot of your music is your music is very very lyrical in itself and and you know you. and it has it has a full, you know, a lot of rhythmic things going, but it has a strong melody. It's not, it's not just a, you know, kind of a, a finger pattern and that's it. Um, you have a, yeah. you get that all kind of interweaving and that's hard. How have, do you think you've been able to do that? Cause it's hard to interweave that melodic part on top of like a finger style sort of thing. Cause it's such kind of a pat on banjo, five string banjo. We find this a lot, you know, in three finger style cause people are playing, mm -hmm. they learn their roles. And then they just mm -hmm. kind of do the roles, but they kind of, it's hard to get it all together, that melodic. Yeah. Part. I don't know. I feel like I've kind of always been doing that. I think, um, and it became a lot easier to do that on acoustic guitar, uh, especially when I kind of got into listening to kind of music that involves more finger picking and just kind of playing around with it myself. But I don't, I think it's probably because as a kid, I listened to a lot of music that was heavy on uh, um, melody and percussion, like R&B, for example, or gospel, or uh, jazz, things like that, that my family listened to a lot. Um, so that's just kind of what I, that was probably a subconscious thing. That's just what I expected. That's what I think a song should sound like. It should have a strong melody. It should have, hopefully, a memorable, a memorable tune it should have some sort of percussive percussive thing going on uh i don't know that's just kind of how i started writing i guess and i think it's just probably because of the music i listened to as a kid um but yeah and then you you know you, you do a lot of alternate tunings what are some of the alternate tunings that you like to use as a as a young when I was younger, I've used a ton. It's I don't even remember all of them, but now it's just mainly open D. <laughs> um, that's probably my favorite one, or it is my favorite one. I don't know why. I think it's I love kind of open sounding chords. I love add nines. I love uh, kind of a major seven type of sound, 
and open D lends itself to these things and suspended chords too. Uh, so that's probably why. And it's just honestly, it's hard to sound bad in alternate tunings, to be honest, like especially <laughs> um, alternate major tunings or minor tunings, it's, you gotta try to sound bad. That's, that's how I, I don't know. <laughs> to cheat sheet. <laughs> To be honest. That's <laughs> what Keith Richard says, I think, isn't it? Like he plays open G a lot and that's Really? That's, I think so, yeah. I think I read that with him. Yeah. <laughs> well, he ain't wrong. I mean, <laughs> it works. It's it works. And it's just you just sound it's just sounds so nice and it kind of matches the um overall vibe that I kind of write in or compose music in any way. I love kind of a nostalgic, melancholic, um kind of atmosphere in some in my tunes so yeah. that tuning kind of lends itself to that um yeah and i love to just capo up and down really i think yeah. different songs of mine um are in different keys because of, i don't know and that way i kind of think like a singer like if it just doesn't sit right in a certain key i'll just use a capo and switch it um, right but yeah open d is the main tuning or sometimes open d minor i play i have a couple songs in open g um that's that's about it really I mean, it's pretty extensive and i want to get into okay. like your 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 live stuff as well because uh we'll touch on that in just a minute but you you do get uh i think just just by virtue of the fact that you're playing the way you play most of the time like um in kind of the laptop stuff and more percussive stuff you do kind of get automatically kind of lumped in with a lot of the the guys who have done similar things over the years the michael hedges like yeah. i said and the um uh john fahey is one i think that comes up quite a lot in conversations um yeah. but you kind of i don't know like you seem like you've gone out on your own and not necessarily tried to imitate these people as much as you have kind of just done your thing and then realized that maybe there's some other people that have also taken a, a similar kind of line is yeah. that accurate that's 100 percent accurate i really was unaware <laughs> um, <laughs> i didn't grow up listening to these people i had no right. Really, I mean, honestly, I didn't even know who the Beatles were until like seventh grade. I had no idea. I didn't grow up listening to uh, um, a lot of the people that I have been compared to. And honestly, some of the people like Michael Hedges, I wish I'd known about earlier in life because I didn't really discover Michael until maybe four years ago, maybe. It oh, was wow. really late. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, because his entire catalog is great. His singer-songwriter stuff is great. His instrumental mm -hmm. guitar stuff is great. His harp guitar stuff is great. And it, it would have been really inspiring to hear that as a younger as a younger person. Um, but, you know, uh, things happen for a reason. But it's interesting to be compared to them. Um, it's funny, someone, I think, no, yeah, someone asked me one time, because John Fahey, I think, mm -hmm. has a Tacoma Park connection, Tacoma Park, Maryland. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where I mastered my last record, Urban Driftwood, um, in Tacoma Park. And someone asked me if I did that because John Fahey was born there or something. I get right. outlandish questions right. <laughs> about, about yeah. some of some of these people. <laughs> and I'm like, I I don't know him. I don't know <laughs> yeah. who that is. <laughs> that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, it comes up. I mean, most of the interviews uh, that are out there. Uh, they I kind know. Of just kind of throw those in. So it's interesting that you didn't necessarily know about them in the beginning. No, I kind of... heard about them in an interview. I think one of yeah. the first interviews I did when Urban Driftwood came out, I was like, okay, I need to look him up because he's coming up a lot. And then I understood um, yeah. why. But yeah, I wasn't too familiar. The only players I was really familiar with were Khaki King, Andy McKee, um, okay, yeah. and yeah. some others um, on the like there was a guitar record label that released a lot of solo guitar things but other than that i just listened to a lot of rock music at that point and yeah. jazz and stuff so very cool very cool the, the thing that caught me i was watching a video the other day of you uh playing um uh Gitka. i think it is the song Gitka. yeah yeah and so what we can talk about the guitar part and the banjo part all day long but the thing that people probably should go check out is the other stuff that you're doing mm -hmm. while you're playing this really kind of intricate pieces and this particular one i think you have a kalimba 
on the yeah. on the right hand on the guitar. Yeah, it's on the right hand, the body of the guitar. Correct. So you're, you're playing that independently from the tapping, but you're also you wear tap shoes quite a lot. I do. And with with yeah. a Picasso board underneath as well. So you've got kind of four different things happening. It's kind of silly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that all started because again, I didn't want to start a band, and mm -hmm. I wanted to do solo, <laughs> solo yeah. guitar things, and it was really just another kind of interesting aspect of guitar specifically is like I love to problem solve with it I love to figure out okay what's a compelling way to do the an arrangement of the song idea I have in my head and with Gitka um, I have the percussive thing kind of that I play with my right hand sometimes and I wanted that to keep going on in the song but I can't do that and play kalimba and play guitar so I came up with the tap shoe um, idea and I don't have any dancing experience. I don't have. Any, I, I can't dance. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a good dancer. <laughs> well, you by got any rhythm, means. Too, man. It's, it's crazy. I have rhythm, yeah. but I ain't got. I ain't got anyway. <laughs> 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 I can. I can keep a steady beat. So that's all yeah. that song requires. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will say my, my yeah. favorite part of that whole thing was was the palm. I think it was the palm on the body, but then you'd catch your elbow on there as yeah. well as like an extra beat on the on the yeah on the, on the push there. It was, it was really that was, I was like that was cool. That was really thank cool. you. Yeah, I had to. It's I think I have to do it that way because um, I can't. It's just a physical limitation. I can't. Um, something related to the guitar, but elbow is kind of the only. Um, option which it took mm. a little bit of time i think it took maybe like a like 10 15 minutes or something when i was writing it to kind of get used to that because i sure. don't normally do an elbow thing but um it feels pretty natural um but it so works it adds another it texture works. and because it's this part of your body rather than the palm or your finger it's yet another tone that you're adding it's a to different it. tone yeah. exactly and i so wanted it's... to like kind of mimic what i was doing with the tap shoe um with so yeah it's yeah, yeah. Have proud. you been able to get that the tapping thing going on the banjo at all? I have at home. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it live. Um, I have started to try to do a little kind of a lap tapping things on banjo. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it is certainly possible and doable. But um, tap shoes are, I'm sure it's definitely possible with banjo. It's, it's a similar thing to what I do with guitar as yeah. far as kind of lap tapping goes. Um, yeah, but I want to do it kind of standing up, but Ooh, that's okay. a whole other thing. You get like a <laughs> dobo strap and then, you know, turn it the other way. I know that was my idea. That was my idea. I was going to try that next week, actually. Ah, <laughs> See ah. how that turned out. So We're onto something. Maybe, maybe video incoming or maybe not if I like fall and bust my face, but, um, <laughs> We'll do, we'll do a follow up show and see how that's a check in. Yeah, we'll see do how a follow up. I'll yeah. have a black eye and a <laughs> gash on my forehead. It didn't work out, guys. Sorry. Oh, it's all good. So I think I think uh, we definitely want to jump into the banjo side, but do you, yeah. you want to play us a little little ditty halfway through here and uh, hear that banjo a little bit? Sure. And then we can come back and talk about it some. Sure. I think. I will. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. Nice. So, so I'd love to hear some of like the, some some of comparison between playing the playing the guitar and playing the banjo. What are some of the similarities, and what are some of the um, challenges you have? Challenges. It took me a little while to get used to rolls um, on the banjo for some reason, which I wasn't expecting. Maybe just because it's. <laughs> No, and pinches were weird. It was it was uh, just kind of learning the rudimentary things, um, which, so funnily enough, and I got my first banjo in 2019. I only had it for about a month because I was trying to learn kind of the fundamentals. And um, even though I could kind of play three finger scrubs things uh, in the first month or so, I got frustrated with it because kind of the fundamentals were, were difficult. So I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have a banjo <laughs> until a year ago and when I picked it back up because I missed it and uh, I regretted the sale but um, uh, yeah it was definitely it's it's a challenge just to I don't know I feel like when I first started playing banjo I was more focused on speed than anything else because I thought that's what I wanted to um, become proficient in but now it's really enjoyable and it's really fun to just kind of learn tunes that I like to play like just kind of like standard things like Cuckoo Bird or uh, mm -hmm. uh, whatever I played yeah. Salt Creek, uh, Lady John, whatever um, it's really fun to kind of open myself up to being a beginner on something yeah uh, I feel like some personal growth had to happen for me to <laughs> want to do that <laughs> because it wasn't fun when in 2019 when I tried <laughs> for the month but um I, I really enjoy kind of having like kind of no or not no, but less pressure um, on an instrument. And it's just banjo is really fun to play. Um, yeah. I don't know why it gets such a bad rep. Um, <laughs> well, we're trying to change <laughs> that. <laughs> I know. You guys are changing the game. I mean, <laughs> Deering Banjo is the you know, best yeah. banjo. I love this banjo. Well, um, as an Americana, right? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good cool. time Americana. Yeah. yeah um, which, I mean, it's. Yeah, it's man. I love open back banjo specifically, but that's a that's another I guess story. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get into yeah. that as well. Yeah. The, was was your goal when you started playing banjo to essentially try and just play it, I guess, the way it's supposed to be played, or was it to try and do your thing with it, kind of in the same way that you did uh, with guitar? It was. I definitely wanted to learn it the way it's supposed to be played. I've seen a lot of guitar players play banjo and they play it like it's a guitar, which has always annoyed me because it's not a guitar, it's a banjo. Um, and I'm interested in learning how to play the banjo. <laughs> so uh, that's that was still my main goal, but now I've become more open to uh, experimentation and um, now that I'm attempting to write my own tunes on it, that's happening more and more frequently. But um, yeah. yeah, I still would love to just become more proficient um, just playing the banjo because it's such a fun instrument it's almost as, yeah. fun, as fun as guitar <laughs> yeah no, it is definitely fun you're getting those roles down real well thank you yeah um i wish i had more time to practice uh because it's just, it really has to be kind of an on again off again thing sometimes because guitar takes up a lot of time but yeah. this is honestly the thing i practice much more than guitar which you know whatever but we won't. Really we won't fun. say anything. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> My guitar's over there. I'm not happy. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. I, I jumped in there. You, you All right. Did so you find it easier to on um, to jump in and you've been playing guitar longer, um, but mm -hmm. do you find it easier to if your hand is cold to jump in and play guitar versus banjo, or is there a certain warm? Do you need to warm up on one versus the other more? I definitely need to warm up on banjo more um then guitar but i don't know i'm finding that kind of the older i'm getting which i'm 27 i'm not old but i just need to warm up in general which is not something i did much uh in my younger days um but yeah definitely guitar requires less of a warm-up than banjo does just because banjo i mean the speed aspect is still there in some of the tunes that i like to play so it's uh 
and it's not, you know, it's not tapping. It's not, you know, you really have to kind of dig in and, and you know, move <laughs> your fingers. So, uh, yeah, warm up is, is key. But um, to answer your last questions about what the similarities are between banjo and guitar for me, um, coming from a banjo back or a guitar background, I think was kind of a hindrance. Uh, so there aren't as many similarities as I thought there would be other than just the general like aspect of being comfortable with finger picking, which is a necessity. Um, but like, for example, strumming on guitar, especially since I'm trying to learn claw hammer now too, that sucks. Uh, <laughs> it's very difficult to uh, kind of be used to strumming on a guitar and then be trying to learn claw hammer and there's no sort of back and forth. It's just all Yeah, it's downstairs. a different thing. Yeah. Totally different. And I kinda have to rewire my brain a bit. Um but for kinda two finger or three finger things, um kinda the only similarity to me is just having dexterity in my right hand. Um left hand doesn't do much on banjo really. Um it can, but I feel like in traditional tunes it doesn't really have as much nearly as much movement as my own songs do which is nice <laughs> because of open is, strings or because of um just, just the much... just banjo tunes are just uh they just require less left hand movement yeah in general from what i've from what i've um seen um and just from the songs that i know how to play that are kind yeah. of more traditional banjo tunes um my music requires a ton of left hand movement so yeah. It's kind of a nice break to play yeah. <laughs> banjo. True, true. David. Is there, so if coming like chord shapes and finger shapes, do you play open G it, yeah. a lot on guitar? So are you looking at the banjo as, as like an open G, like guitar? Or are you looking at it as like an altered standard guitar tuning? Because it's kind of, it's almost close. It's very close to the top four strings of standard guitar yeah. tuning. Or are you just it looking is. at it as a different instrument completely? Kind of what's what's I happening in your brain? It, yeah. So I'm looking at it as a totally different thing. Um, okay. I tried to to take as little guitar knowledge as I could to banjo. Because it's not, to me, they're not really related. Um, like open G tuning on guitar is not, the, the, the shapes are, are different. Um, the chord shapes that I use when I'm playing an open G are different than um, than what's happening on banjo. Um, and I, I don't really play an open G that much. I play an open D mainly, which is totally different. Mm -hmm. uh, chord shapes totally not, they have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> um, so I just kind of look at banjo as its own thing, which it is. Um, and I just, I don't know, I try to, really my main, the main way I'm kind of learning how to play right now is just teaching myself tunes that I like and uh, yeah, kind of learning chord shapes that way, learning um, kind of pretty much everything, learning everything yeah. that way. So Have you had a chance to, to I mean, you I know you're on tour with Valerie and, and um, Tao and those guys and they, they I think all, all three of those, they have, have banjos, right? Yeah. But have you had a, well, how did that, did any, any tips come from any of those mm -hmm. wonderful people that along the way that you things you picked up on in the way they play? Yeah. So Rachel Davis, um, mm -hmm. who's an awesome claw hammer banjo player, um, she gave me some great claw hammer tips, which were essentially what I was worried about um, with learning how to play was you just got to do the same thing over and over again for solid two weeks to a month <laughs> to get it down. <laughs> Um, and I didn't really want to hear that because I don't have time <laughs> to do that, <laughs> but, um, I will try, uh, just to, she was just telling me about kind of the, the standard kind of claw hammer, uh, uh, motion. Mm -hmm. Um, so she gave me great tips and it was interesting to watch Valerie and Tao play because they definitely don't play, um, in any sort of traditional banjo style. Correct. I mean, yeah. they don't really play in, they don't play scrugs, they don't play melodic, they don't they don't do any of that. Um, they just kind of play it how they want to play it, which I thought was really cool to see because we all had very different styles. Yeah. Um, but we all played banjos. It was 
really interesting to see how versatile the banjo is as an instrument, um, which kind of cemented in my head that I should respect it, you know, even more as just its own thing, not related to guitar. Um, so, yeah. That's cool. The, the tour itself was the four of you, right? And I think you, what, you mm -hmm. had 15 dates, something like that? We had 12 dates, oh. and it was the four of us, and we yeah. would like sit on stage, just yeah. kind of in a semicircle, and take turns playing songs, and sometimes we'd play on each other's songs, and we had kind of group numbers, and we had an improv, <clears throat> an improv section in the middle of the show, which was really fun, that I, cool. would, I would lead that usually on guitar or kalimba or something, and they would kind of kind of riff. It was really cool. Um, nice. like, a, like, a, like a jam. So you, you weren't like support and opening acts for each other, per se? You no, were all we were all on stage together. On stage. Yeah, That's... and we would just watch each other play. So we really That's played awesome. three individual tunes, uh, two ensemble tunes, and an improv. So we spent most of the show just watching each other, which was always saying, fun. Yeah. That's got to be pretty cool to see. As, as a performer, you don't get a whole lot of time to sit and enjoy exactly. what's happening around you. And especially when you've got like well-respected musicians, you know, like Valerie yeah. and Tao and people like that. And... Yeah. I mean, I've been a fan of Valerie since mm -hmm. uh, my dad showed me a song of hers 2012, maybe, I think. Yeah. Um, so it she's was awesome. really wild. Yeah. To... She's great. It was wild she's, to see her play. She's so passionate, so yeah. like emotive. Um, and her banjo like style is, I don't know how she does it because she just really only uses her thumb and sometimes her index finger, but her thumb is just, my thumb would just not be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> if I had to play like that. It will. You just got to keep, keep going with the, with the practice and uh, you'll, you'll get there for sure. <laughs> what, what I'm intrigued by is the idea of you mastering the claw hammer technique and then potentially applying that over to guitar, reverse engineering yeah. that. I think that could be kind of fun. Yeah, it's been a thought of mine. That's kind of why, not why, but part of the reason why I do want to learn claw hammer um, is to see what I could do with it on guitar. Because I think yeah. that's something that, I mean, I think I've seen like Molly Tuttle do that yeah. and maybe yep. another guitarist, but it's definitely underutilized as a, just a technique um, because it's, well, I don't, I don't know why, but yeah, I would love to eventually figure a claw hammer out so I could kind of use it on guitar and see just what what comes out of that. It sounds really cool Yeah. when I've heard other people do it. So. Absolutely. Have you, are there any banjo players out there right now that are grabbing your attention? Like, oh, I, I love what that, that particular player is doing. Or I love Alison Brown. Okay. Um, yeah. She's just crazy. <laughs> Her latest record is insane. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, um, oh, names are escaping me right now. I really uh, generally love Adam Hurt's kind of gourd banjo mm -hmm. albums. Um, I said there's just so, so many. Like, who, what's his name? Andy Thorne is great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, he's fantastic. Obviously, like Bela Fleck. I love Bela Fleck's music. I love Abigail Washburn. I love, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of players and yeah. I've seen, I've seen, um, Dom Flemings play banjo a good amount of times mm -hmm. and he's always really interesting too. He is an entertaining man for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. He's yeah. crazy. I don't know how he does that. <laughs> and he, <laughs> uh, his shows are just so just, gosh, just the suit, the like most supreme one man show you can possibly yeah. see uh -huh. like eight instruments yeah. on stage and just Energy. wilding out. Energy. Yeah. Start to finish, or the whole way through. Yeah, he's, no he's fantastic. Breaks. <laughs> he he always. We saw him. Uh, was it Melfest? We saw him at this year. Yeah, yeah. He, he kind of. Oh, he, nice. Yeah. Yeah, he was. He came up to us at the booth like before he went on, and he was you know, his normal kind of super humble, super nice guy, saying hi, catching up with Janet and Greg Deering because they were there, and then mm -hmm. he came by shortly after his set, just absolutely just dripping. Just energy. No, just, yeah, we. That's he what just I saw had a too. workout. It was wonderful. Yeah. Are you there as well? Yeah. 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 Oh, very cool. I had luckily avoided that drench like downpour, but yeah, uh, yeah. he, uh, we were talking right before he went on like backstage, and he was like, oh, ah, awesome. "This isn't looking good." <laughs> isn't... Are you are you at Mopest every year? 
I've only been to Merle Fest twice. I was there this year and then a couple of years ago. All right. We should um, definitely uh, yeah. definitely link up. We're there every year for sure. So. Okay. We'll cool. Yeah, good to know. I yeah. love Merle Fest. I've had a great time every time I've gone. It's a fun festival. Yeah. It is for sure. Yeah. All right. David, have you, have, you, have you tried the six string banjo? I'm curious. Or do you no. just not want to keep the, the do you want to keep the guitar and the and the banjo thing fully separate? I've never tried a six string banjo. I've been curious about it, but I'm not sure how to approach it. I'm assuming no. I would approach it like a guitar. But this is gonna blow your mind. What like what is it? Like I don't like, I don't really get it yet. So once I get better with five string, I can maybe move on and maybe demo one a six string one but it's just kind of weird to wrap my head around at this point yeah uh, it's tuned is it tuned like a guitar is it tuned it's tuned, it's tuned just like a it guitar is... yeah it's a guitar with a banjo See, body yeah. yeah i saw um i played near guitar festival earlier this year and i saw a guitarist have he had a six string banjo and he was playing like a guitar and i was like why is he what's What's up with that? I don't. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. Fair it point. didn't occur to me that it was supposed to be played by the guitar. <laughs> yeah. Certainly, I mean, it takes a bit of a bad rap because a lot of people will, will kind of shun it as not real as an instrument. Um, I I think if people are trying That's to play sing a nice. song, well, I agree with you. We 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 have made a point of calling it a six string banjo and not a uh, a gitjo or banjo guitar or any other. Uh, denomination but um yeah. you know we had uh, me mary was in here yesterday uh doing some filming with us and she played a song on the six string banjo and she was you know, really gently just finger picking um and it, it sounded really really nice and it's a song that she would typically play on acoustic guitar as well um mm -hmm. but it just added like, again it's just this a different kind of paintbrush to paint the picture with it's a different tone and it just it worked really 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 well it wasn't just like a you know a cheating cheating way of playing a banjo per se it was just mm -hmm. a, a different texture so it was it was really nice to, to witness that so nice I think, well I think you enjoy it that kind of makes me want one but do i have any space in here no <laughs> make space and it will come that's all i'm gonna say okay well okay <laughs> 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 how many instruments do you bring on the road with you now because and how has um, it grown because was it was originally just an acoustic guitar and now you have kind of a whole family yeah so it's still mainly just an acoustic guitar because it's very difficult to transfer multiple instruments just by myself but if other people are coming with me i like to bring acoustic guitar and now a banjo or acoustic guitar and my harp guitar um a couple of shows I brought acoustic guitar, harp guitar, and banjo. Yeah, it can be kind of whatever. It depends on how many like people I have <laughs> to carry yeah. guitars and yeah. banjos and whatever else. Um, yeah. Does the choral yeah, come I, out with you much? I've only played choral live twice. Okay. Um, I yeah. just I'm really scared to take it anywhere because it can't go on a plane at all. Uh -uh. Um, yeah, the first thing I think of was like, where do you find cases for, for chorus? You don't. Yeah, uh, exactly. A friend of mine, Amadou Piate, who's like a, he's he's a he's a jelly, so he's a master chorus player. Um, oh. He makes cases that basically just look like coffins, and he holds mm. it around. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. It seems crappy. I don't want to deal with that, so it just stays home. <laughs> Uh, there's, a, there's a gap in the market there, I think. Cases for no, chorus. yeah, they need to get on that because there's a ton of <laughs> core players out here. I don't really see why they don't have something in the store, but um, <laughs> I would buy it <laughs> if they did. <laughs> for sure. Oh, man. Oh, man. So you've got, what, three albums out? I have two three. records. Two records, okay. I have Unwind and right. Urban Driftwood. Okay. And then Dawning Unwind just came out. Dawning's a single, isn't it, that it came out? Yeah, Dawning's was... a single that will be on my new record coming out uh, yeah. June, July-ish, uh, 2024, next year. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And the, I mean, I'm the album, I, d I took a really deep dive on uh, Urban Driftwood this past couple of weeks, and it's just it's 
it's a wonderful wonderful recording it's really really thank good. you so, thank you so much that was made in prime time lockdown prime time um, lockdown <laughs> prime time lockdown <laughs> We were lucky so, to be able to do it safely because yeah. all of the studios in the area were closed except the one that I go to normally, and it was me, mm -hmm. Jeff Gruber, the engineer, and um, we were just more mass and distance. And yeah. uh, when I brought in Amadou and um, Taryn, the guest artists on the record, um, yeah, we just were as far away from each other as possible and yep. made it work. <laughs> came much. out good, though. A lot of good music came out of... Uh came out Thank of lockdown you. um that was one of them for sure um Thank you. i'm curious and dave and i are talking about this as well do you are the songs designed so that you can replicate them live like accurately or are you kind of overdumbing in the studio and, and doing different things or that's changed over the years so okay. on my first record on wind the songs were absolutely meant to be replicated um 100 yeah. percent uh, live, so no overdubbing, and I was totally against overdubbing at that point. I thought overdubbing yeah. was cheating, yes. because I still want to be the best guitarist ever at that point. So <laughs> no overdubs allowed. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Which it's a, it, honestly looking back, it was kind of a silly mindset, and it made the recording process um, difficult because I also want to do everything in like a take. But anyway, um, <laughs> and uh, for Urban Driftwood though. Uh, Jeff got me to open up to overdubbing and just some of the songs required it anyway. So yeah, that's on some of the songs like After the Storm, Sun Showers, Swift Breeze, other ones. I am overdubbing and some of the songs I play live using a looper, a lot of them I use backing tracks that okay. I just trigger. You trigger yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, nice. But a lot of the songs I also can just play live just solo like through the woods you know with the kalimba and tap shoes and hammer and guitar and all yeah. that it's totally me no no dubbing no no That's extra awesome. stuff i mean the technology exists i know you're using tone dexters as well right um to get your yeah uh, i'm using the, the tone, tone dexter down. it's awesome <clears throat> i really 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 like it it definitely makes a difference live um yeah. because yeah i mean it pretty much eliminates any sort of feedback that could happen mm. um, and, and it just beefens up the like the guitar tone at least for my guitar um, yeah. it's great and it's really easy to use it's awesome but yeah. my guitar sounds pretty nice on its own <laughs> so it's it's working with a good pickup in it <laughs> yeah yeah I was I was actually not, not, not to keep talking about guitar but I was reading about yours uh, the other day and it's cool because it's got the i know it's it's a custom build and it's got the mm -hmm. sound holes in the top but the, the the holes in the front of it are if i'm not mistaken because the wood is from like old barges right that are from, mm -hmm. from the east coast and it's 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 the lumber was like borrowed by mm -hmm. these like by basically mollusks, mollusks. Yep. yeah and so yeah, it's so just left all, holes yeah. yeah and they're so that's just the wood holes. that he used it's cool yeah and i chose it well Eric, the builder, Eric Wagenshaw, Scott mm -hmm. Top Guitars, um, he chose it for me based on a request I had for him, which was, I love your, basically I said, I love your guitar, I love the two big sound ports on the side, but when I'm lap tapping, the sound gets muffled because the sound ports are facing my belly. Right. What can I do about this? I really want to buy one of your guitars, but this is an issue. And he says, well, I have some wood for you. And then he sends me pictures of this crazy looking whatever, huh. <laughs> mollusk old wood. Yeah. And I was like, this is, this is awesome. And it complete, it totally solves the problem. So yeah. why not? And it's awesome. Yeah. And it's unique. It's completely unique. Yeah. 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 Each set is different. So no, That's very cool. no weird mollusk hold wood looks the same. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right, all right. Maybe we should introduce mollusks into the factory and see what we can do. I was going to say, if you guys, you know, let them nibble on some, some banjo heads. And I'm sure, it'll, I'm sure it'll work out. Just like let them overnight. I would be first in line to buy that. <laughs> Mollusk nibbled banjo heads. Just take right. my money now. I'll go. <laughs> I'll go see production. Just a second and see what they say. Great. Yeah, we're on it. Please. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're approaching the top of the hour, Dave. Do you do you have any any more topics you want? I know we have a couple of questions here in the chat waiting. 
let's see. Let's look at the chat. We have, you know, right here we have one uh, from Julie Colton saying, how does composing for film work? Are you given a brief for what is required? Ooh, great question, Julie. Um, it is, it is interesting. I'll say that. I, I love it, though. Um, basically, what happens is you're sent a rough cut of whatever film you're working on. Um, in my case, I've done a feature length documentary and a short uh, documentary, a short film, and among other things, but those are the two bigger things that I've done recently. Um, and yeah, they send you a rough cut of the film. And what I do is I watch it. Um, and then I, they give me a list of cues. Cues are basically where they want you to put music um, for the film. And it can be, it can range from, you know, five cues to a hundred. I mean, it, you know, you don't know. And I look at that and I watch the film again and I add cues or delete cues based on what I think should be in there. And then you just really just talk to the director um, a lot, <laughs> like a lot. And you hope that they know something about music. So when you like send in a musical idea to them, they're not just going to tell you, oh, make it, make it, make it angrier, make it more sad. You mm -hmm. kind of want more than that. But some directors don't know that much about music, so they can't tell you more. But I've been lucky to work with directors that are also musicians themselves. So it's been a really good process. But yeah, you basically watch a rough cut of the film. And then if you agree to do the film, then you just start composing based on the cue sheet and wow. um, you just send ideas to the directors and just it's really just a constant back and forth uh when i, I did a film called dusty and stones which is like a uh, hour and a half hour 45 minute documentary wow. and that was like constant back and forth for about a year of wow. uh like what the cue should be, what the overall kind of messages for a, the scene that I'm scoring, what the emotion should be, how I can kind of like twist the scene so the viewer feels one way or another way, or like portray what the characters are feeling, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's really just constant dialogue, and uh, it's really really fun. It's a lot yeah. of work. It's uh, it's definitely it's fulfilling in a different way than kind of touring is or playing just an instrument just to play it um, because the music is part of like an, a larger kind of work. It's not just sitting there by itself, um, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the, the process. And then eventually once the cues are done, they get put into the film and then you probably have to do more corrections. It gets mixed, it gets mastered. Then it. that's it. I imagine it's, it's a it's a um... Thing you have to do kind of really zone in on right and spend some pretty intense periods of time absolutely just losing yourself in in the film itself to try and kind of capture absolutely everything. i probably yeah. watch the films that i scored over 20 times wow. while scoring them um just because it's and this is just the the film itself not including the like individual scenes <laughs> that i'm scoring yeah. um it's definitely an intense really emotional uh process and it's also it can be difficult especially bringing in other musicians and you know writing out parts for people to play and stuff like that it's it just takes a lot of time but it's really it's really fun intense That's cool. but fun i don't know that we've ever had a uh, a film composer on doing live oh cool. i don't think okay. maybe i could be wrong dave can correct me on that one but that's cool there we go I, did, I didn't know. So thank you, Julie, for asking the question because I, I was not sure how that worked either. But. Yeah. And then uh, Victor, who's a regular viewer, uh, asks, uh, will you have the pleasure to plan on meeting Alison Brown? Ooh, I met Alison at Merlefest. Merlefest is the place so to be. It's where the cool kids sweet. go. Sweet. I played yeah. right before her okay. and I didn't know she was playing after me. So I'm glad I didn't know. But <laughs> I met her <laughs> backstage before her set, and she was so sweet. She gave me this really cute um, banjo pin. She has like these banjo mm -hmm. pins, but it it was like a was it like a cat holding a banjo? It was like it was like a, I think it was like a cat holding a. It was really cute. Um, That's awesome. I still have it, but she was very sweet. <laughs> she's she's a very nice lady. Yes. And then I watched yeah. most of her set, and my jaw was on the on the ground. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's gonna be pretty know. cool, though, right? Coming off stage and then getting to watch her. It was so immediately cool. after. Yeah. But it's like, yo, this is just a level of of banjo playing that is way above my head at that point. <laughs> I really don't know how she's doing any of that. Uh, she's dedicated her entire life to it. I mean, oh yeah, 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 for sure. But it's still just like. I don't know. It was just really inspiring to watch, and I just love her composition style too. It, she yeah. pulls from a lot of different influences and genres, and it was extremely interesting to watch and hear the set. Um, and yeah, and then I got a record <laughs> after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, the cool thing about Allison as well is that she's constantly trying to do more, right? I think they. Yeah. If you remember the last time we spoke to her? I think she had just started learning some jazz chords and. Mm -hmm. trying to play some more like dc land type stuff and uh, that's Jeez. that's cool i mean it's completely different to kind of what she typically would do but she she wants to you know evolve her yeah her i could hear kind you know? of the jazz influence on her latest record it was really yeah. like like what wow yeah and the arrangements were really cool it was like mm -hmm. just really refreshing to listen to um yeah and yeah it was just really cool that she was also so nice <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome. Always good to meet your heroes, and they turn out to be really good people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for when sure. I met Dave, I was really happy. I guess they disappointed. That's, <laughs> that's why I'm still here at the company. That's right. <laughs> I love this camaraderie. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's been it's been a few years now. We've got this thing going. It's it's all good. It's all fun. Uh, right, we're at the top of the hour, Dave. Do you have any more? Uh, thoughts you'd like to share with the class no this was this was fun i you know you'd love to uh keep seeing what you're doing with the banjo you know as, yes. as, the, as the future you know, comes Heck yeah. and, uh, so well, i'm keep excited playing. to keep playing it oh yeah, yeah for sure um somebody has a just, new banjo coming this week i was gonna say once i get oh. this once i get this new banjo it's yeah. over what's <laughs> coming myself. you want to divulge what's coming uh the clawgrass 2 yeah Ooh, that's um, a nice one yeah. It, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. And I it's won't have... A, yes. And after tour, my last kind of uh, tour dates, I have about a month off. So I will be playing a lot of banjo. I'm excited. <laughs> Very well, good. I think at some point we're going to have to have a, uh, like a, just a revisit, right? And see how you're getting on with the banjo. Oh, and, a project. See a what check magic you're creating. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, we'll report. check back in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> See how that oh, cool is coming on. <laughs> now I really got to practice. <laughs> yeah. I think it's good. You, you happy nah, to come I back on you. again? Yeah. 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 Done. <laughs> Jasmine, it's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute thank pleasure. Thank you so today. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you mind? Uh, do you have one more in the in the bag that you would like? Would mind playing us out with? Sure. Yeah. I'll play some of this one. Ah, here we go. Wrap that. Guys, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time on December 11th for episode 99. We're joined by Alison Brown uh, for the Steve Martin Banjo Prize. But in the meantime, Yasmin, thank you so much. And while you're playing, you. I'm going to throw your website up onto the screen for everyone to go find you. Real quick, you're on Apple Music, you're on Spotify, you're on all the usual all kind of streaming of the, channels. All of the streaming platforms, yeah. Perfect. All of that. Yeah. All right, take it away. Cool.